himself. Brought down by Alex Super, a catch at the 40-yard line. Right and now, seven for what? I'm sorry, Chris. Right now, Ricky Ray is is his timing is perfect. And what I mean by that is, as whether it's a Andre Dury or a Chad Cackard pushing out to the flat or that curl or in route from Spencer Watt, he's back there in his drop, timing bang on, getting the ball out of his hands on time, and not allowing Alex Hall and that defensive line to get into their pass rush move. For nine out of the gate, and a, a drop on the one incompletion. Second and three, double tight ends, and Cacker held up, falls through to the 41. Going to be but close. Short. Going to be close. And no hesitation from Scott Milanovic as the punt team comes out on the field before even taking a look at it. I mean. That bomber defense number one against the run through three weeks. Take a look from the left of your screen. You're going to see some pretty good run support from this bomber defense. They step up. Come on, Washington again. That's second tackle in the run game. What did Alex Hall tell us yesterday? Come on, Washington, the epitome of our defense. Come on, Johnson. And again, the... Covered downfield, excellent by the Argonauts, led by Chad Rempel. Jerry Goody! Mm. You're happy about that. No, but the courthouse is right next to that little pub. With those amazing cheeseburgers. Yeah. Like these? Did you guys have jury duty? Wendy's. Can I plead insanity? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes. Now a specially crafted cheeseburger is closer than you think. Wendy's new pretzel bacon cheeseburger with melty cheese sauce and smoky honey mustard all in a warm, soft pretzel bun. Now that's better. And we're open late. You better hurry up. We don't want to be late. <gasps> what the heck did you just do? Let your man out. Of man. Last year, you helped Cure Later Tackle Hunger raise over 1 million pounds of food for food banks across Canada. Let's keep the drive alive. Go to purelatertacklehunger.com to find out how you can get involved. Pure Later Tackle Hunger. Hi, I can help you down here. Uh, one adult, one child. Um, tonight you actually don't have to pay, okay? What? what? It's free. What? It's free. free. What? It's free. Why? Large popcorn, large string. Total is going to be free. Really? Yep. Why is everything free? Earn free movies with everyday purchases with the Scotiabank Scene Debit Card. Sign up now and get up to five free movies. You're richer than you think. Scotiabank. Our sack tally is brought to you by Purolator. Tackling hunger across Canada. Check and it is Purolator tackle hunger night here at his investors group field. I know Scott Milanovic would like to get his group going a little bit and see if he can't climb up that sack race. Sack totals six for Toronto coming in. Last week against the Rough Riders. Two field goals and a two and out for the Bombers so far. Fourth possession of the game starts at their 35. Big for Simpson and Buck Pierce takes off and Something the Winnipeg felt they had to start doing, at least keeping them honest with Buck Pierce running a bit to show the defense that he will take off. Yeah, that Tim Burke mentioned that what defenses had been doing is keying on Chad Simpson and crashing down their ends, not respecting the fact that an athletic quarterback like Buck Pierce will take that ball, pull it, and get the edge, get outside. So he said in order to make the defensive ends respect it, we've got to have Buck run it a few times. And the other tendency breaker, Justin Gold's in the game, second and five. We want to see him throw the ball a little bit more because he has run almost exclusively. Hands off here, and the Argos stout on defense. Well, that's, that's just it. I mean, if Justin Goltz, who's come in and either handed the ball off to Chad Simpson or sometimes run the Wildcat for the Bombers offensively, basically it's been run. 
So again, Tim Burke discussing the fact that they've got to start to mix things up and show some pass when he comes in the game or else the defenses will just load up the box. So Renault on and Owens is back. Owens had his 20. And the Bombers down in a hurry to cover that. 49-yard punt by Mike Renault. Time now for the GMC Coaches Playbook with Paul Apolise. Let's talk about one of the plays that happened early in the game. I really love what Toronto did using misdirection. Nobody wants to go against these front four for Winnipeg. And what they did a great job here with some in, in they did a reverse here. So they faked the reverse and then they leaked the tailback out into the backfield. So now while everybody's chasing the reverse, nobody sees the tailback. The quarterback can get out on the edge. As you'll see, you'll have three players. They're flooding the field. You have one player deep. You have a second intermediate. You have a third guy in the flat. They drop the flat player. It puts you in a position you can get a quick and easy throw outside. And again, you get your defensive line in a position where they have to chase guys all over the field. Really good execution by Toronto early in the game. Really was a big play to get outside and get Chad Cackard some running room in the open field. And as coach mentioned, have all the levels, so it gives Ricky Ray the choice. If he has more time, he can push the ball deep or just dump it to his running back. Packers with 12 yards rushing, 26 yards receiving in the opening quarter. Ricky Ray, wide side, there's Owens working against Brandon Stewart, the corner, and it's uh, an Argonaut first down. Very good game plan against uh, an aggressive Winnipeg defense from Scott Milanovic and, and, this, and this offense right here. I mean, you know that Chad Owens will always be part of every game plan. He's averaging around nine or just over nine catches per game after three weeks. So he's always involved. But it's been that misdirection. Different levels of receivers, as Coach mentioned, in his playbook. Third catch, 37 yards for Owens. And now Packard inside. And he's quickly tackled, brought down by Ryan Lucas at the defensive tackle spot tonight. Has some injuries on defense for the Bombers as well. I mean, Ryan Lucas and Zach Anderson getting a chance to play in the interior of the defensive line with Kenny Maynard and Alex Hall outside. Paul had an interesting comment yesterday. He says, we're the fastest defensive line in the league, and Zach Anderson has stepped in, and they haven't missed a beat, even without Bryant Turner. Well, JT Gilmer, and two sacks for Anderson. Back now on second and long. Ray is flushed and he'll be cut down. The hit by Marcus Fraser bringing Ricky Ray down short of the first down. Uh, and that was a coverage sack more than anything. Again, that Argo O line playing pretty well to start this game. Gave Ricky Ray time initially, but sooner or later it's going to break down. You can't. You can't hold your blocks that long. Let's take a look down the field as Ricky Ray's trying to look at the replay here too. Go ahead and run it, guys, as the receivers break out of that bunch formation. Now stop it here. You've got guy on top covered pretty well underneath, man. Nowhere for Ricky Ray to throw that football. Ray Fontaine sails it downfield. Javon Johnson, and again, good cover. Well, the cover teams have been excellent. Both sides, Matt Black led the way that time for Toronto. <laughs> Pierce and the Bombers start first down at their 25-yard line. Big to Chad Simpson. There's Pierce rolling. Comes down at the catch made by Isaac Anderson at the 31. Anderson was six. One of the concerns for... Tim Burke, head coach of the Bombers, was with Corey Watson out. Corey Watson is an outstanding blocker, and he does a lot of this in the first three weeks and did it well. To come down from the receiving spot and come off the edge almost like a tight end, make that block, either kicking out or sealing. And they weren't sure how Rory Cole would, would fare there. Looked pretty good on that last play. Well, it's second and three. Here's short drop. A little part of the tackle, but the University of Saskatchewan products got a first down catch. Well, the, the concern for Tim Burke was will he have to substitute? 
So Kohler's going to have some troubles blocking and wasn't going to block like Corey Watson, who did an outstanding job over three weeks. How would he do? They knew he was good at running routes. He's got good hands in the passing game. They were very confident in Rory Kohler to make that substitution. The question was blocking, and he, and he did that on the previous play. Alabama's go double tight end first down. Pierce is going to take a shot. Wants Denmark again, and it's picked off. Jamie Robinson has his first CFL interception, and on the return back inside the 40, and he'll get thrown out of bounds there on a crunching hit by Steve Morley. But Robinson, who had one taken away last week on a pass interference, now has his first CFL pick. Florida State, the bookends for the the bookends for the Toronto Argonauts secondary. Two corners, Pat Watkins and Jamie Robinson. Both Florida State Seminoles and great careers. Blanket cover from Jamie Robinson. Fifth interception tossed by Pierce on the year. Argos take over at the bottom of the 30-yard line. McRae, he's got Spencer Watt. Touchdown! That didn't take long. Besides Ricky Ray <laughs> bust in the Hall of Fame, somewhere on, on that plaque, it should just say corner route. Because this is another one, and this time the ball is placed perfectly to Spencer Watt. Turns on his outside shoulder, almost impossible to defend. Just like that, turnover turns into a touchdown. Second touchdown of the year for the Simon Fraser product. Takes just one play after the Bomber turnover. Oh. Extra point is through. And the Argos go up by eight. Seven on the outside. The score is Toronto 14, Winnipeg 6. Well, he plays the Z. And if you're making the Canadian transition, that would be the Z. But it's a it's a position on the field that has got to do a lot of dirty work. It's got to it's got to come in and do a lot of blocking. And he's been great at that. It's got to block for receivers downfield. And this year, because of the the confidence of Spencer Watt, every single game getting to a new level, they want to throw the ball to him more. And he was. Perfect route run there, got the corner route, and Ricky Ray hit him. And unlike his first touchdown of the year against Hamilton, he didn't have to kick the convert, <laughs> which he right. did in week one when Swayze Waters was injured in that game. And made it. Made the convert. Later, there was some field goal position. He looked over at Scott Milanovic, you want me to try it? And he said the coach had no confidence in him trying a field goal, but <laughs> he does have a convert on his resume. And a touchdown here tonight. Will Ford lets it bounce. Fields it at the 15. And up around the 28-yard line for Buck Pierce to go back to work. But first, us to go back to Sarah Orleski. Well, Chris, Ricky Ray now is six completions away from moving into third all-time on the CFL for completions in a career. And I asked Tim Burke about Ricky Ray because he spent years building defenses going up against him. What impressed him most about Ray? There were two things he immediately went to. One, his poise as a passer. That was his first one. The second was his ability to throw the deep ball. He said to be able to keep it away consistently from a defensive back. People don't recognize just how difficult that is to do, and we've certainly see him have success with it tonight. Buck Pierce is going to try and answer that Ricky Ray touchdown pass, a drop for Rory Kohler. And fans getting a little impatient here with a bomber offense that started well, but has bogged down here in the second quarter. You know, Sarah's bang on with that. I, I don't know that in my memory, in the 19 years in the booth, 11 as a player, against some great, great quarterbacks, the likes of Dunnigan, McManus, and watching those guys play. I'm not sure there's anyone that has thrown the deep ball as well and as accurate as Ricky Ray. Second and ten. 
Pierce pulls it down, reloads, and throws incomplete. It was in the area of Doug Pierce, but a two and out, and the fans are showing their dissatisfaction. Well, they had some things going offensively, as you mentioned. They had Clarence Denmark down the field on a couple of plays, although Clarence Denmark was the intended target when it was intercepted by Jamie Robinson. And a two and out after the quick turnover and then score has got the Bomber fans a little restless here. Line drive from Renault. Owens 33 yard line. Up to the 40. So a couple of touchdown passes. Very similar tonight as he closes in on Danny McManus. And Danny McManus could throw that deep ball pretty nicely too as a Winnipeg Blue Bomber, part of his career. There's Rick House on a nice little slant over the middle. BC Lion. 94 West final, final play. Yeah, and the 96 Great Cup. Well, yeah. Versus a Hamilton Tiger Cat and a Great Cup winner in 99. Check down here to Andre Dury, who is upended just short of a first down at the 48-yard line. Eight for Andre Dury. Been a high percentage night for Ricky Ray, and he comes into the game at 71.8%. Yeah, it has not been under 70% in completion percentage in any of the first three games. And is just behind Dave Dickinson, career completion percentage. And I'm saying just behind. And he's stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Enoch Mwamba, a middle linebacker. That's a couple of times tonight. The Bombers have turned back the Argos second and short. Uh, he shoots the gap nicely here. This is just pure instincts by Enoch Mwamba. Watch how quickly he reads this and shoots the gap. Beats the block with speed to the backfield and has Chad Cacker tied up. Well, the defense needed to yes. give the Bomber offense a lift, and Enoch Mwamba supplies that. Three Fontaine booted away. Short kick. Javon Johnson flags it down. Johnson dropped at the 29-yard line. There's Jermaine Gabriel downfield in a hurry. The Rookie, former Calgary Colt. Let's check the flag, which is back near the line of scrimmage. Holding. While the ball was in the air in the punt, Winnipeg number 43. We'll go back 10 yards from where they caught it. It's first down. That's James Green. Well, during the week, there was all kinds of talk about this running game and the Winnipeg Blue Bombers Chad Simpson being the focal point of the offense they started the first series Tim Burke without throwing him or, or giving him a touch in that very first series trying to catch maybe that Argo defense loading it up and getting close to the line of scrimmage Here's Simpson nothing led by Robert McHugh wasn't happy with the way Corey Sheets ran against the Argos defense last week and as you mentioned had some harsh words for his team after a, a poor day one practice this week. Yeah it was day one it was it was hot Scott Milanovic said he was getting frustrated with the group a little bit and Robert McCune stepped up and called him the hammer and he, he gathered the guys on his own and said you know I need to talk address the team and when he did they were listening believe me. Leon Lang also there, and the Argos very high on that rookie defensive tackle. There's a completion to Isaac Anderson, but he'll be short of the first down. Robinson again with a defensive play for the Argonauts. This is just not characteristic over three weeks when you talk about Toronto defense and the guy in charge of it, and that's Chris Jones. Great Cup champion from a year ago. In that second half of the season, he had offenses guessing. 
as to what to try and do to beat them and, and to get off to the start they have, which has been bad, <laughs> to be quite frank. Last in the league against the run, second to last in the league against the pass after three weeks. Officials giving us the three-minute warning. We'll return. 